All right, guys. It is another hot and miserable midsummer day. Yeah, that's right. It is 61 degrees. 61 degrees right now at 11 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning, July 18th, 2021. And uh, being Sunday, you know, I like to be bringing you my doomsday sermon of the week. Uh, but... We have no really sermon, nothing really quite fit the notion of the sermon, so I just went over today's mainstream media this morning. And so we're going to dive into predicting where, when and where, but more importantly, where World War III is going to break out. Now, I have always... Uh, for years, I have chosen the South China Sea as my particular doomsday forecast for World War III. Uh, it will break out in the South China Sea, but apparently not everyone agrees with me, but it's kind of in that general area of the world. Uh, this is the latest, uh, <clears throat> latest place on the planet. To add to the list, this is from the Daily Beast this morning. Wonder where World War III might break out? Try Taiwan. Okay, so we're going to center on Taiwan. Why that's going to be where the apocalypse officially kicks off. <clears throat> this is from James A. Warren. <clears throat> I guess this is kind of a doomsday sermon, come to think about it. <clears throat> Ever wondered where World War III might break out? A clear and troubling consensus has emerged in the American national security community that the Taiwan Strait is the most likely place for a major war to erupt between the United States and China, that it might start soon, and that such a conflict might quickly escalate into a nuclear confrontation. In March, the leading foreign policy organization in the United States, the Council on Foreign Relations in New York, issued a report concluding that Taiwan has now become, quote, the most dangerous flashpoint in the world, close quote. There, I guess meaning Taiwan, a unique and troubling set of geopolitical developments have conspired to make a shooting war between the People's Republic of China and the United States more likely than ever before. Recently, the newly appointed commander of U.S. forces in the Indo-Pacific region, Admiral John Aquilino, remarked that a possible invasion of Taiwan by China, quote, is much closer than we think, close quote. <clears throat> Ever since a pro-Western government was established on the island in the wake of Mao's victory in the Chinese Civil War in 1949, Beijing has waged a patient and methodical campaign to re-establish sovereignty over the island, which today is home to a thriving autonomous democracy of 24 million people with a high-tech oriented economy and a strategically invaluable semiconductor industry. Now we're getting to some truth in the mainstream media. <clears throat> Taiwan now has a military of 300,000 soldiers and more than 400 jet fighters, but the primary deterrent preventing Beijing from seizing the island by force has been the military might of the United States. For 40 years, Washington's policy of, quote, strategic ambiguity, I love that term, strategic ambiguity has been 
successful in both deterring China from seizing the island by force and dissuading the, China, the Taiwanese from declaring independence, an act which various Chinese officials have said would be an open provocation to war. Current U.S. policy officially recognizes the People's Republic of China, the PRC, as the sole Chinese nation that also promises military and political support for Taiwan. The 1979 Taiwan Relations Act declares that the U.S. will, quote, consider any effort to determine the future of Taiwan by other than peaceful means as a threat to the peace and security of the Western Pacific and of grave concern to the United States. Yes, what were they saying about that, uh, about the semiconductor industry, yes, a strategically invaluable semiconductor industry, I think is the most honest reporting of this article so far. Uh, thus, the United States has not promised to defend the, the semiconductor industry itself, but left itself the option of doing so. It is, you know, that we're going to go into World War III over a strategically invaluable semiconductor industry. Yes. <clears throat> uh, it is also signaled to Beijing by various diplomatic and military channels its inclination to do so. This policy, known as dual deterrence, has come under considerable pressure of late. President Xi Jinping has offered a number of rather stern, even bellicose messages that he intends to make unification a reality sooner rather than later. Indeed, that little dictator sees unification today as an indispensable objective in his strategy of, quote, national rejuvenation, in which China assumes its rightful place on the world stage and begins to shape the rules-based international order in a way that he has described as, quote, just and reasonable given China's rising importance. As he said in a recent speech, quote, China must be and will be united. We do not forsake the use of force, close quote. The Chinese strongman, I love how he is, I guess as opposed to the U.S. weak man, the Chinese strongman refused to speak with President Donald Trump until he reaffirmed that America would not alter its one China policy and Chinese officials have raised strenuous objections recently to President Joe Biden's decision to, rack, to relax even further than the Trump administration certain strictures on U.S political and military communications with Taipei, which is Taiwan's capital, calling the decision unwarranted interference in China's internal affairs and militarily provocative. Meanwhile, the PRC Navy, the most powerful Navy in the world by far, next to the U.S. Navy, of course, has stepped up the frequency and intensity of its live fire exercises in the Taiwan Strait. Chinese ships and aircraft regularly harass U.S. naval and air patrols operating in, net, in international waters in the South China Sea. 
Beijing's diplomats have accelerated their campaign of bullying neighbors like the Philippines and Vietnam into accepting its territorial claims and signing exploitative contracts with Chinese companies, uh, you know, talking about the South China Sea, uh, but that's a whole nother rant. Uh, <clears throat> of great concern to American policymakers and military strategists has been Beijing steadily improving, quote, anti-access area denial, close quote. I love how they come up with these terms, anti-access area denial capabilities, which are designed as defense expert Michelle Flournoy writes in a recent issue of Foreign Affairs, quote, to prevent the United States from projecting military power into East Asia in order to defend its interests, you know, like semiconductor uh, hotbeds or allies. As a result, in the event that conflict starts, the United States can no longer expect to quickly achieve air, space, or maritime superiority, the U.S. military would need to fight to gain advantage and then to keep it in the face of continued efforts to disrupt and degrade its battle management networks." Close quote. Uh, and of course, as you're probably aware, meanwhile Beijing, you know, like Washington, has also orchestrated a sophisticated and complex information or disinformation uh, campaign, uh, which is about equal between China and the U.S., of course, uh, and complex information warfare campaign on Taiwan itself. Uh, <clears throat> According to Rush Doshi, director of the Brookings Institute's China Strategy Project, this initiative is meant, quote, to support China's favored candidates and sow distrust in Taiwan's democracy, close quote. Uh, Beijing has co-opted a host of media outlets on the island, even gaining control over one of the island's largest media conglomerates in order to shape favorable perceptions of what life would be like under its rule, you know, kind of like the flip side of what the mainstream media in the U.S. is doing here. Uh, Xi and his Chinese Communist Party colleagues, most Western experts agree, share a perception, share the correct perception that the United States is a declining power, no longer suited for leadership in international affairs generally, let alone in East Asia. This belief, you know, of the decline and fall of the American empire is a highly destabilizing factor in the U.S.-China relationship for it tends to fuel correctly Beijing's sense that America lacks the will to defend its interests and allies in East and Southeast Asia. And then there is the generally ominous issue of the PRC's long-range intentions. The vast majority of Western international relations and China scholars now reject Beijing's depiction of its new assertiveness in the Indo-Pacific region as an integral part of its, quote, peaceful rise and believe it is pursuing a strategy of regional hegemony in Asia and perhaps even a direct challenge to U.S. global leadership in the long run. 
among those who seem to buy this interpretation of Chinese foreign policy count President Joe Biden, who remarked on that, quote, China has an overall goal to become the leading country in the world, the wealthiest country in the world, and the most powerful country in the world. That is not going to happen on my watch. Yes, close quote. Uh, anyway, good Lord, guys. Uh, you know, they always say at the beginning of these stories, they claim this was a nine-minute read. Uh, it's more like a 90-minute uh, lead. Uh, but we're going to get down. Uh, we're going to skip over. I'm going to put the link on here. You can read the missing parts. But let's get down to the bottom line of this whole analysis. <clears throat> the prospect of a clash in the Taiwan Strait for U.S. forces, all experts agree, is not a happy one. Taiwan is 100 miles from mainland China and 5,000 miles from the base of the U.S. Pacific Fleet in Hawaii. Given the PRC's formidable military capabilities, American forces would suffer grievous losses simply attempting to sail into the strait, let alone what they would suffer as the conflict escalated. It has been an open secret in Washington for a long time that the China team regularly defeats the U.S. team in the Pentagon's war games. In March of this year, Air Force Lieutenant General S. Clinton Hinote told Yahoo News that the U.S. team had lost, quote, a number of recent war games and that in the most recent game, quote, it was not just that we were losing, but we were losing faster, close quote. Is preserving Taiwan's autonomy, meaning is preserving a critical semiconductor industrial hub worth risking thousands of American lives or even nuclear war? The answer surely can no longer be a knee-jerk yes. All right, so, uh, so was that just a bunch of chest-beating uh, anti-China propaganda, or is this for real? You decide. Uh, I'm still sticking with the South China Sea myself. Uh, but we shall see, but I'm going to get out there and enjoy this 61 degree day in July before the uh, next flash flood of the week shows up uh, in the next couple of days. Bye guys. This little dog. You do not even see like seem like you're motivated to get chippies today. It's pretty dreary out there.